Hi friends, it's Victor Costa, Peace, Love and Muscles. Hope you're having an outstanding day. Um, today let's talk a little bit about um, intention uh, in the gym. What does that mean? So if I go into the gym in a very haphazard way and I really don't know what I want to accomplish, my body is going to respond that way. It's going to still uh, understand that it's working. It's still going to be in the atmosphere of the gym. It's still going to um, pick up the sets uh, into my body, but there's a difference between doing the exercises and doing the work and then focusing on something with attention. What do you want to accomplish? So in, instead of just going in there doing a lot of work and letting the energy kind of like shoot all over the place, what is the goal? What is the objective and what is the intention with this workout to sort of funnel or sublimate this energy into an objective? something that you can really see the results from. So if, if I'm results oriented, I want to make X bigger, or I want to get more cut, or I want to have this sort of silhouette, that's a lot more uh, important, how you view the way that this is going to go, rather than just going in there, and I'm gonna do the gym, and I'm gonna do three sets of this, I'm gonna do five sets of this, I'm gonna do whatever, because there's a lot of people in there that are doing that, but they don't have a clear focus of how that is supposed to sort of manifest and what that's supposed to look like. And what's interesting is I'm big on visualization. So if you focus on what you would like to have, you sort of, um, you sort of determine how the workouts are going to go rather than doing the workouts and hoping that you have this result by focusing and creating a focus for yourself of what you want. You sort of gravitate toward the exercises and the the stimulus that's going to help you achieve that goal. So yes, goals matter. And, and, and it sounds funny, but it, you just can't go into the gym and even do the same routine. If I give two people the same routine, uh, one has a clear vision of what he or she wants and the other one doesn't, but I gave them the same workouts. I'm telling you that you would have two very different results. It's how you bring yourself into this experiment, what you're trying to do. A lot of people do the work and then they hope that the, a result comes that they want, rather than focusing on the result um, and really making that the priority and then allowing that to sort of dictate and trust that you're going to find the right workouts and routines and energy to accomplish that. I think you really do have to go in with a clear cut goal. Um, also, I mean, you know, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before. Uh, there was someone in the gym who recognized me and said, hey, Vic, can we work out together and let's do some biceps together? And I said, sure, why not? So he was a strapping young man, about six feet tall, probably 210, 220 pounds. And I said, we're going to do two sets of curls. And that's it. He said, two sets? I normally do um, three separate exercises, five sets, 10 reps. So in total, he does about 150 reps. And I said, no, we're gonna only do about 20 repetitions. So he thinks to himself, well, if we're gonna consolidate the typical workout that I normally have, which is 150 reps into just 20 sets, we're probably gonna have to grab something heavy. And I said, actually, you're probably gonna have to grab something light. I have a sense that you're not even gonna be able to accomplish these two sets of 10 reps with a weight that is typically lighter. He grabs a 110 pound barbell for curls and I said, you're probably gonna need something like a 70. He thinks that I'm crazy. So I do my first set and I do 10 repetitions with a 70 pound barbell. Then he grabs it and he's able to accomplish about six or seven and he cannot understand what's happening. He thinks I played some sort of Jedi mind trick on him and he can't figure out why he can barely budge a 70 pound barbell when he typically uses 110 and does 150 repetitions overall. I did my next set and it was time for him and he did about five repetitions and couldn't even move his arms anymore. So he said to me, what did you do to me? And I said, I didn't do anything to you. I said, the question isn't what did I do to you? The question is, what are you doing when I'm not here? How were you able to accomplish 150 repetitions when you weren't even able to do 20 repetitions with a lighter weight in a short period of time? What's the story there? And it caused him to, to really pause. And what I think happened was, of course he wanted to impress me with a little bit better form, 
and a little bit better focus and a little bit more intention. But I think personally that when a person has a long workout like that, they hedge the whole way. They hedge, they're never fully in, they're never all in because they're so busy figuring out how am I gonna accomplish all these 150 repetitions when you have so much to go, you're never really involved, you're never really present in any one repetition enough that it's meaningful. And so at least we discovered that with this particular situation and you can see how that played out. So the question isn't how much work did you do or how many reps or how many sets, how present were you and how involved were you? And what I think happened with my training with him was that I brought him back into his own body. In other words, he was just trying to get the reps done before and now he was really focused and he was sort of letting his body feel what he was trying to do rather than just get it done. He was letting the, mun the, the muscles uh, get um, connected. He was, he was bringing his mind to his body. He was really focused and that's the difference between throwing weights around and conscious bodybuilding. And when you do that, and then you add a little bit of weight and you keep moving forward in that way, you have present workouts, you're very focused, you allow the body to feel rather than count. I think that a lot can be accomplished. So guys, thank you so much for enjoying the video. Please like, share, and comment. Ding that little bell so you alert it to new videos as they come up. And of course, thank you so much for everything. Uh, please take care of yourselves. Peace, love, and muscles. Bye.